What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Media Club. I'm Paul Schmidt. I'm the owner and creative video strategist for Introduce Multimedia, and I'm somewhat the unofficial host of Good this. Host. Unofficial host of this live stream slash podcast. I just want to welcome you all to another arousing edition of our nerdism. And so I introduce myself. I will pass it off to the guy below me. Who are you? Hey, I am Nick. I am the creative video architect that you introduce. So I make all of the videos that are not live streams. <laughs> Segway. Or signs off on the videos that are not live streams. Mm. <laughs> but I'm James. I do all the live streams and some of the videos that Nick then has to sign off on. Awesome. Awesome. So how is everybody today? You ready to get started? Ready to get rock and rolling on this brand new edition? And we're finally having a sunny day. I shouldn't mm -hmm. say finally. We had a rainy day yesterday, but like we're all good. Day. We're all good. So, without further ado, let's just dive right into what we want to talk about when it comes to projects. So, last week we had uh, we had a pretty heavy duty week. Of course, it seems to be the case just all the way around, but every week. Yeah, every <laughs> week at least as of late. So, who wants to go first with what they what what they've been working on, what they're excited about? Oh, I can I can go first. All right, James, okay. what what's going on in your world? What is uh, what what do you want to talk about? So last Monday, right? Last Monday, we got an email from this company that none of us had heard of, based out of England, based out of London, actually called the Garden, and they wanted us to do a one camera setup live stream of a guest speaker so i start looking into the garden i'm like okay this is kind of cool but what what do they do you know so let's uh, let me find my notes here because i'm that guy where did i put them whoops i have them okay so their tagline the garden's tagline is where curious minds meet curious minds and it is all about connecting one another and educating one another so they host weekly talks between the audience and world experts. It's normally like a 30-minute talk and then a 20-minute question and answer. So this was one again, this is again completely different than anything I've experienced at Uno before. First of all, the whole time I was doing the live stream, I had somebody out of London on a on on both WhatsApp and when we were setting up, uh they were in the producer role like talking to me, making sure they liked the shot and making sure the person was content. And it was just kind of different. I kind of got to take a back seat on a live stream, which does not happen like at all ever. I'm always the one I'm doing everything. On the live stream. Not everything, but making sure it runs smoothly. And I, I pretty much set up the camera made sure she was comfy, got the audio tests and all that. And we were good to go. But uh, another difference was I was la they wanted me to use one of our laptops. So instead of me taking this big iMac that if you've ever seen me on a live stream, I take this iMac everywhere because it's powerful enough to output everything. They just wanted it on a little MacBook. So we got it one of our MacBooks that's behind Paul over there and hooked in our Elgato and hooked the camera up, audio through the camera, and it went super smooth. <laughs> they were... Uh, very excited, honestly, with how smooth it was. And I even got an email from the producer today saying, quote, you have been one of the most well-prepared videographers we worked with so far. So, I mean, I, th I feel like that speaks a lot. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of riding that high today yeah. from that. Um, but hopefully we get more talks with uh, the garden in the future, specifically our talk um, on... Wednesday was with Alice Dreger. She is a, I'm going to mess this up, bio, what is it? She is a historian and author and bioethicist. And the talk was on intersex and how science and gender can be related, but are not entirely related. And it was, it was a good talk. Hmm. Learned a lot. <laughs> 
Yeah, so this uh, this job was uh, probably one of the more simpler ones that we had when it comes to the live stream aspect. And what I like about um, what we did was the fact that we had that this ability to be um, to be able to communicate across the pond. When I say across the pond, the pond and the Atlantic Ocean, and so it's just one of those things that um, this is part of our world now and this this global aspect and like i said this is their the the furthest um client that we've had um mm. also and, it's just really cool to be part of an international live stream i, I realize that most of our live streams could go international but this right. one is like geared for europeans right absolutely i mean that's really cool uh, I mean, I thought it was interesting uh, when it came across my plate. I'm just like, I read through it. I was like, this thing's really simple. Mm -hmm. um, but I was a little wary because May has been kind of a uh, a difficult month to with all the hard deadlines that it, it has more than other months that we've had. And so, so I was hoping that we'd be able to get that in because it was, just seemed like a cool thing. I'm glad it turned out. Anyway, moving over to Nick, what do you want to talk? What are you working on? What do you what's got you excited this week? Yeah, so literally earlier today I was filming at um the, the new Jackson House for Child and Family Charities. Um so Jackson National Life Insurance Company uh partners with Child and Family a lot on different things. Um they are like I feel like they're always at events that we're at sponsoring and things like that um so they are helping child and family charities uh renovate uh it used to be called the mccree house uh so it was a house right next to the old um mclaren hospital um and i guess i don't know specifically what the mccree house did versus what the jackson house is going to do but it's essentially like this really big house where um, child and family charities will now use to provide services to youth mostly um, and it'll just be another house that child and family charities will be able to yeah use and help kids um, I think it will function with the the gateway program at child and family charities mostly which is uh, one of child and family child and family charities main programs which is geared towards youth uh, and, you know, homeless youth and kids that are really struggling. Um, so yeah, so today Jackson brought a bunch of their volunteers and they were, you know, taking stuff out, throwing things out, like basically getting everything ready, uh, to be renovated. Um, so yeah, so I just got some B-roll. We're going to go back later, get some more interviews. Um, and yeah, it's just a really cool, uh, new, uh, house that child and, family child and family charities will be able to use in the future and yeah yeah i mean what's really cool about that is i, I believe that house is going to replace the current house that is the headquarters for the gateway youth program i believe it's because what the whole goal is for child and family charities is to get most of their programmings in a certain in one little area and they're spread out with different services all over and i know that part of their goal is to to like kind of like shorten the distance from for staff and um for folks uh, that could potentially need multiple services instead of going to these satellite offices all over the place um try, trying to consolidate a little bit of area which I think is is key, and like you mentioned, Jackson is like um, is a huge supporter of child and family charities, but it's also a huge supporter of a lot of organizations that we work with, which is neat. And uh, we, we so we run into them a lot. And uh, speaking of hard deadlines, this this project that Nick is talking about is one of those hard deadlines um, uh, that that we have to turn this video around luckily we're getting all the stuff in on one day and that's that's a rare occasion that that happens 
<laughs> that all, mm -hmm. all the things are falling into place on a day and so we don't have to don't have to scramble around to but that's cool those are two really cool cool projects one brand new and one for one of our uh, long-standing clients child and family charities and that's uh um yeah awesome well that's great looking forward to seeing both of those well one's done because of oh yeah it's up on the website already it's, yeah it's so good to go. is it really it's yeah. up on the website already yeah <laughs> holy crap the video editor was working on it at like 2 a.m our time which is 8 p.m 8 a.m their time <laughs> huh so i mean what do they edit out i mean do they uh i don't think they edit out anything it's just they 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 so they also had me record in 4k because yeah. the live stream can't be 4K. Yeah. And then they take those raw files and edit it to oh, be like dude, a produced and stuff. version. Yep. Mm, cool. All right. Well, let's move on to what what else is, has our attention outside these walls? So. My bad. I oh, went right. a little early on that. <laughs> oh, what? A little bit. No, you're fine. You're okay. Good. Good. Yeah, so I think I will start this time around because once again, I'm picking <laughs> something I'm not watching. I'm picking something that I, I listened to and that I really enjoyed. Um, and for those that know me, know that I'm a big history person, um, especially when it comes to American history. And this... Uh, audio drama, audio book, whatever you want to call it, actually closer to audio drama, was uh, uh, sent to me or came across my attention by my sister. She listened to it and she said, you're going to like this. And, uh, and it is Edith, um, Edith with an exclamation point. And it is about um, Edith Wilson, the first lady to President Woodrow Wilson, and it really follows along in a uh, somewhat embellished situation in which, based on real events, obviously, because they're based on, on real, real people. And, um, but the drama really unfolded about her taking over, in a sense, after President Wilson had a stroke. And he was incapacitated, which is actually something that happened. And so, um, and so technically she could have potentially have been our first female president because she was actually running the country unbeknownst to some of the folks um, that are including the vice president. But, but anyway, it was really good. If you enjoy, um, it's, it stars Rosamund Pike as Edith. Um, she did the voice of Edith. Clark Gregg, who's from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and all the Avengers movies. He did the voice of Woodrow Wilson. Then you also have other folks like Diedrich Bader, who's known for the Drew Carey show. He was in there. And Stephen Root, one of my favorite pe people, actors. He was the voice of the vice president. So it's really entertaining. Um, I think all the voice actors do a wonderful job. Uh, Rosamund Pike does not break her accent. She has a great American accent through this and she does a wonderful job. And so if you like audio dramas and if you like history, this is right up your alley. It's funny. Um, it's, you know, it paints, uh, paints a really cool picture of this, this time period and what had happened. And the, yeah, the performances are great. So Really recommend it, especially if you're a um, uh, history history fan. So that's Edith. Who's next? Who wants to go next? Edith with an exclamation mark. I can go next. Okay. Yeah, hey, look, that's my slide. It's over there. <clears throat> okay, so Kay and I have been watching Upload, which is an Amazon original that we had neither of us had heard anything about, right? But this show... <laughs> is really good <laughs> like surprised both of us um it starts with the little dude in the vr goggles on the left there not on the far left but center left um he's the main character the two in the center are the main characters she is essentially tech support they're called guardian angels or just angels um 
and that'll make sense in a second. Let me go to his part of the story. The, the show starts with him dying. And he can either choose to go into surgery to see if it can get repaired and live his life normally, or if he wants to upload. Uploading is <laughs> kind of brutal, honestly, but it digitizes all of your memories and everything you are and uploads you into a server. The, the, the main server that the show focuses on is called Lakeview. It's very, like, north northeastern Vermont-ish, like, resort type of thing. Um, and she works for the company Horizon, who runs that uh, the Lakeview. But it's a very, like, dystopian look at a digital afterlife where uh, even in the first episode, he goes to the mini fridge and he's just swiping to the side, to the side, to the side. And it just shows all these options that are just rotating through. And he goes like, oh, yeah, a cup of coffee. And he goes to grab it. And it's like, this will cost three ninety nine. So it's like a very capitalist way to charge people to live their afterlife as well as their life but it's very futuristic very sci-fi the themes are really good it's all about love and loss and grief and there's a mystery throughout the whole thing because did he need to upload was he forced to upload it's it's just a really good little mystery comedy drama romance that has like 16 episodes and season three just got renewed so nice. looking forward to that that's what who, i've been watching i don't who, know any who, other names who are who are some of the performers i really can't see from this Let the, me find are, out they, for you. are they known or are they unknown so the mm -hmm. the main characters are andy allo i probably ruined that name and robbie amil 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 oh Stephen amil's brother yeah <laughs> wow that's oh, cool. yeah, so wait, if you remember me talking about heels, <laughs> apparently I'm just on the Emil train right now. <laughs> mm, that's great. Because okay, you really can't tell who that is no. with that, that profile. Is that, is that uh, t Taylor or Tyler Sheridan on the left? or On the far left? No, yeah. that's Kevin Bigley. He oh. may actually be like, our favorite character in the show because he's another upload living his life in Lakeview, but he was in, um, yeah, this doesn't spoil anything. He was a, a veteran of like, uh, fighting in the middle East. I don't think they ever say which wars, but you kind of put clues together throughout that. He was, um, an amputee. Uh, he, uh, forget the, the, he had no legs and then mm -hmm. he chose to upload the veterans paid for him to upload the V, v of A, yeah. essentially. And so he's like, they digitally reconstruct you from pictures. So he is, his mind, which still goes through PTSD and everything, and it's it's insanely well done, but um, he's in his younger body. And he's probably the most relatable character to the audience because he grew up, like, he fought in Iran and Iraq. So, like, our generation, my, my next generation here, like, he's the self-insert for the mm. millennials. And it, it works really well because, I don't know, it's just a really good show. I was really surprised by how much I liked it. It's good, though. Nice. Oh, and batting cleanup is Nick. What are we talking about today, Nick? Yeah, save, uh, yes. save the best for last. I haven't watched this yet. No spoilers. <laughs> I haven't watched it yet either. Right. <laughs> yeah, so Severance um, finished up its first season a couple weeks ago. Um, I honestly didn't know what to talk about this week, so this was kind of just something I had been meaning to talk about for a while. But uh, yeah, so it's an Apple TV show, um, mostly created by Ben Stiller. Um, I think he directs all the episodes or most of the episodes. Um, but yeah, it stars Adam Scott and essentially the premise is, uh, there's this company called Lumen and, um, they're like a big giant, you know, conglomerate, like it's kind of nebulous. It's kind of nebulous what Lumen actually does, but they definitely seem kind of evil and shady. 
But when you work at Lumen, um, they sever you from... So essentially, when you enter your job, you don't have any memories of who you were before. So like, <laughs> and then, so then, so you're essentially a whole different person at your, at your job. So then when you leave, then you're back to your normal self. Um, so for Adam Scott's character, he had a, like a trauma happen in his life where it's not a spoiler. It's like first you find this out really soon, but, um, his wife died. Um, so that's kind of his motivation for wanting to separate from that throughout the day a little bit and not have to think about that. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of where the, 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 the story starts. Um, you know, Adam Scott starts the, the show as like, you know, a employee and then kind of goes from there about him kind of uncovering more about Lumen and like, maybe we shouldn't be separating ourselves from, you know, who we are and like just the, the repercussions from that. But it brings up a lot of like interesting things about like work-life balance, um, things like that, uh, you know, like management, like uh, how like how, how we think about uh, the companies that we work for, um, things like that. But honestly, like the best thing about the show is just like the performances, like John Turturro, Christopher Walken, like these are like two of the best actors and like the characters they play in the show are so good. I don't want to like spoil anything about um, their relationship in the show, but mm. super good. Um, you know, cinematography is amazing. Um, yeah, this is like the show that like will probably be like on my top, like one of my top shows of the year for sure. Um, and yeah, it's just another great Apple TV show. I know Paul talks about Apple TV a lot, but they just have a lot of really good stuff right now. Yeah, in fact, my my pick for next week is going to be an Apple TV Plus <laughs> nice. program. So, um, but I'm not going to say what it is. I'm not going to spoil it. But Time's <laughs> a book. What? No, time you read something. Finally. Just kidding. But yeah, so well, that's awesome. I mean, I've been hearing really good things um, about Severance. A lot of good things, and so I think what I've been doing with Apple TV Plus shows is just waiting for like the talk and, and hearing which ones are getting the most conversation, and uh, and then I'll, I'll dive in. So I'll probably dive in soon. That's me what? with stars now. Honestly. What's that? You That's know. me with stars now. <laughs> After BMF and heels, I'm all in on stars. Let's go. Yeah, um, it's just amazing. There's so much good programming, and this summer is just insane. So, anyhow, time we got some questions this week. Finally, some questions. Let's get into them. First time that one's played. Yeah. <laughs> Q and A, Q and A. So let's go to the first one. What is the first one, James? The first one is how long does it typically take Uno Deuce to make a video? And I thought that was a good question, and that came that was that was posed to me the other day in a conversation that I had. And um, and to be honest, it's really difficult to say because one of the things that I did to preface it was. Well, if we get, if we get everything that we, you know, that needs to be recorded, just done quickly, it will take about how long from that? If we have everything in hand, everything's recorded, like we do it all in one day. So like, like take the CFC thing today, we're going to get both the B-roll and the interviews all the day and how long typically is the turnaround after that guys uh well normally we say like two to three weeks yep um for this instance though given like the turn the, the deadline is so soon it's going to be like a week probably <laughs> but, yeah uh, there are some exceptions um but generally if you if you really look at it I usually said, I said, you know, because we don't always get everything in one day, I would say 
on average, it runs in total maybe four to five weeks if we, you know, um, once we get everything, it's about two to three weeks of the edit and because it goes through because folks don't understand it. A lot of folks don't know that it goes through some internal passes in the edits before it goes to for the first time to the client and then they give their feedback and then you know that actually adds on um some time so i think you know about a month i would say is about an average turnaround time in total um so but of course there's situations where that doesn't happen like Take, for instance, the Davies project. We're working on a project with them in which one of the main interviews has been injured and she hasn't <laughs> hasn't been able to participate. So luckily, you know, the uh, the time frame on that is a little um, flexible. So anything to add, James? Live streams are all done all in the same day. Oh, <laughs> but prep time. What is the prep time? Uh, okay, so I've had <laughs> the longest prep time I've had is I had a sit down meeting in February for a live stream in October. <laughs> yep. Yep. There's a lot of prep when it comes to live streams to make sure it all yeah. goes okay. <laughs> all the all the preparation is time consuming and on the front end. So whereas in regular video productions, um, the time, most of the time is taken up in the edit. Um, so, all right. But we have a second question. What is the second question? Second question. What is your recommendation for a video editing app on mobile phones? I want to preface this with the fact that these two both use iPhones. So they're going to recommend Apple products. I don't edit on my phone. I have an Android, but I don't. I I I, I have no say on this one. Well, I mean, yeah. um, this question was actually posed to me at the marketing summit that I spoke at, and you know, right away I said, to, you know, I said yes. I have an iPhone. If I have to edit on a phone, which I'm not a big fan of editing on the phone at all or the ipad i know that's probably my old-fashioned nature in, in that approach but if i have to i've always had good luck with the imovie um, app which is a free app from apple it's not pre-installed on the phone um but you can download it uh from the app store in in that regard now a friend of mine who does use an iphone um, as well, he uses a program called InShot, um, which is a paid pro paid app, and it's cross-platform. So there's a ton of video apps, and I at one point um, there was a while ago I was trying to test all the video apps, video editing apps that were out there. I got through like ten. And I'm like, holy cow, there's a lot of these. And some of them were just complete shite. It was awful. Awful. And uh, But some of them were pretty good. Um, you know, another good one if you're in the Apple world is Clips. That's a really powerful one that can do really social media-based because um, it can shoot in the square format um, right there. And... Uh, um, but that, that's also a good one. But for the most part, InShot, like I said, it is a paid one. It's not, it's probably like, is there a free, I'm not sure if it's just a free download and then you, or, or it's just a, um, you have to pay for the year. For InShot? Yeah. So I believe it has a seven day trial. I think yeah. that's what I saw. And then it, it's paid after that. Yep. But it's it's not, only like nine bucks a year. If yeah. You do with the so, and some of these things you can really um, be uh, can offer quite a bit. Now, as for video recording, um, uh, there's the uh, the okay. There's a good one that I just lost the name of. 
<laughs> just was right there. It's like called film something. Filmic? Filmic Pro. Filmic Pro. So if you want to get better use out of your camera as a cinema, if you're, a, you know, like a, 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 an aspiring cinematographer, you want to get more out of your phone camera, that is the app to use. And I believe that is also cross-platform. So Filmic Pro. Um, so, yeah, those are some things that you can dive into if you're trying to do more with your phone or your mobile device yes. but that ends our show that's it yeah so everybody out there please 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 check this out you can always catch all all of our replays on our youtube channel at introduce multimedia um if you have questions about uh and we also post the um the the replay on our website as well each each monday they go up um, and if you have any questions, uh, we would love to answer them on the show. So email us at info at introduce.com, put in the subject line, uh, question for media club. And so, yeah, we would love to hear from you. Love to see you out here and also, you know, check out some of our stuff, all that stuff. So, all right, that's a show. We'll see you next week with brand new picks and brand new projects that we want to talk about and hopefully another question from all of you out there that are curious about video. Thanks, Bye everybody. Everyone. Bye. Bye.